Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we're going to be taking a look at Bobby Gentry and we're going back to 1968 for her performance of Ode to Billy Joe. So let's get Bobby up on screen and see how she gets on. Was it third of June, another sleepy, dusty, delta day? I was out chopping cotton, and my brother was baling hay. And at dinner time, we stopped and walked back to the house to eat. Mama hollered at the back door, y'all remember to wipe your feet. And then she said, I got some news this morning from Choctaw Ridge. Today, Billy Joe McAllister jumped off the Tallahatchie Bridge. Papa said to Mama as he passed around the black eyed peas. Oh, Billy Joe never had liquor since. Pass the biscuits, please. There's five more acres in the lower 40 I got to plant. And Mama said it was a shame about Billy Joe. Seems like nothing ever comes to no good up on Choctaw Ridge. And now Billy Joe McAllister's jumped off the Tallahatchie Bridge. Brother said he recollected when he and Tom and Billy Joe. Down my back at the Carroll County Picture Show And wasn't I talking to him after church last Sunday night I'll have another piece of apple pie You know it don't seem right I'm just going to jump in here just to mention a few things about the performance, also about the song. And I do suggest that if you want to listen to this track all the way through without me interrupting it, the link's going to be in the description below. And get the lyrics up on screen as well, because it's great to follow along. Sometimes in this performance, if you don't know the track, a few lyrics might get lost here and there. But follow it through, because... The beauty about this track, not only in the way it's delivered by Bobby vocally, in terms of having that great storytelling ability with her vocal, it's also the meaning behind the song as well. And also the meaning that you can attribute to the song yourself and look into it as much as you want to, because there are so many ways that this could be dissected. And the good thing about these BBC videos is that we get facts at the bottom of the screen that we can read as well about the artist. I don't know whether it's going to mention about Bobby's upbringing but she was raised by her grandparents and her grandmother sold one of their milk cows for the next door neighbor's piano and that's when Bobby started playing piano at age seven just teaching herself and also started to learn bass and guitar and banjo and vibraphone as well so from a very young age she turned into an all-round artist in terms of being able to play being able to sing being able to right and being able to produce this is the other thing that she would just arrange the music herself and produce it herself but commonly on records they would choose the name of a producer at the record label because it maybe wasn't seen as professional to have the artist doing their own songs as well but that's certainly what happened in Bobby's case that production ability and it's a totally different skill set to be great at production 
and being able to write and sing and play instruments. So Bobby was an all-round artist and had creative control of every single element. But quickly, just to mention musically what's going on here, because we've got Bobby with that ability to play guitar finger style and also sing at the same time. I always say it doubles the difficulty, but her vocal delivery as well, her relaxed vocal, she's not really leaning into the sound, not belting out any chest register here, but just giving that talking quality to it to give it that storytelling quality as well so you can start to connect with the story and once you break it down in terms of the way she delivers that vocal every verse is freeform and this is another thing about her playing fingerstyle and singing at the same time the delivery of the vocal doesn't really fit in with the timing of the guitar they're two separate entities so that takes a lot of concentration and a lot of ability to pull off in the first place but the song being freeform in the verses apart from the tagline of the track. So by having Billy Joe McAllister in the first and the second verse, it means that the cadence of that final line, the hook line of the whole song can now flow. And it's the only line that does that, which just really creates impact and makes it stick out in the brain because it's the only thing that is uniform in the whole track. So on that level, it's really clever writing in order to get that main line to stand out. And it's also clever in the way that in the third and the fourth verse, and as we progress through the track, it's then abbreviated to Billy Joe, but we keep the same cadence, that same expression and phrasing in the vocal that we had in the first and the second verse and throughout the track. And you can look into that in terms of Maybe it's to do with the meaning of the track and the fact that as we progress through the track, it's now almost like they're forgetting the guy's name because they mentioned it earlier, but oh, it was Billy Joe, but I can't remember his last name. It's abbreviated in order to keep that cadence exactly the same throughout the whole track and keep the impact as well. It just so happens, and I probably think intentionally that Bobby has written it like that in order to make a point about the meaning behind the song. And this is the great thing about Bobby and other top songwriters is that when they write a track you get a whole story within a track to the point where and as happened in this case you can make a movie about one song because there is so much in there and there's so much that you can expand on just from that initial story, that initial song. And the whole track has such a conversational quality about it, the way that Bobby is delivering this vocal. And a lot of that is to do with the lack of vibrato or singing techniques within the voice. Because when you're talking to somebody, you don't put vibrato on your voice. I'm not talking to you like this. I'm not doing that because it's just a normal talking voice. And that's what we've got in this song. Bobby occasionally applies a tiny bit of vibrato on phrases, but never at the end of lines or any excessive vibrato so that it stays like a conversation. And again, it's a clever technical use of the voice that's gonna give you that connection. And it's really gonna highlight the story because sometimes when you're listening to a singer and they throw in a lot of technique, for example, trills and vibrato, it means that you start listening to the voice and sometimes lyrics and meaning can get lost because of the vocal gymnastics going on. At the age of 13, she moved to California to live with her mum. And as we saw on screen, she studied philosophy at university and she later transferred to the Los Angeles Conservatory of Music to work at her writing ability, but also work at her performance ability. And during this time, she was performing, singing and playing at pubs and clubs. And it was a demo that she'd put together that was heard by Kelly. Kelly Gordon at Capitol Records and this was in 1967 and Kelly was an executive at Capitol Records so they decided to sign Bobby and Bobby had recorded a demo of Mississippi Delta and also Ode to Billy Joe but on this demo 
The O to Billy Joe was just an acoustic version, so just her voice and her playing guitar, whereas they thought maybe it would sound better with strings behind it. And initially, on the single that they were going to release for Bobby, on the A side, it was going to be Mississippi Delta, and on the B side, it was going to be O to Billy Joe. But once the strings had been added in there, they decided that O to Billy Joe was going to be a hit. So they put that on the A side and put a lot of money into it. A lot of PR went into O to Billy Joe and it paid off because it went to number one and that was for four weeks and went on to sell over three million copies worldwide. But let's get back into the performance. I saw him at the sawmill yesterday up on Choctaw Ridge And now you tell me Billy Joe's jumped off the tail at Bridge Mama said to me, child, what's happened to your appetite? Well, I've been cooking all morning and you haven't touched a single bite. That nice young preacher, Brother Taylor, dropped by today. He said he saw a girl that looked a lot like you up on Choctaw Ridge And she and Billy Joe was throwing something on the tail at Bridge A year has come and gone since we heard the news about Billy Joe Brother Mary Becky Thompson they bought a store in Tupelo There was a virus going round Papa caught it and he died last spring And now Mama doesn't seem to want to do much of anything And me, I spend a lot of time picking flowers up on Choctaw Ridge Into the muddy water of the Tallahatchie Bridge. I'm just going to stop it there. As you can see from the time at the bottom, it's just about to cut out, which is a shame. But this performance and the song, as you can see the way that it's written up on screen, that there's still speculation as to why Billy Joe jumped off the bridge. And just having that in the song, speculation about the reason behind why somebody would do that, it just shows how deep that writing is. Another subtlety to the way that Bobby delivers her vocals here is the way that she intentionally elongates the end of the lines in terms of holding on a vocal note. So it means that when we do get to the tagline of the track, because that tagline is staccato in nature, it's going to make it stick out even more rather than just holding on a note for a longer period like we have done previously throughout the whole verse. And this performance is in 1968, so the album O to Billy Joe was released the year earlier and that album replaced the Beatles at number one spot on the Billboard albums chart because they were there with Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. So what a feat that was and she got three Grammys as well in 1967. So during this time she was making a lot of TV appearances and was on shows with Andy Williams and Tom Jones and Glenn Campbell as well. Check out my videos on Glenn if you get a chance. She also did an album Album with Glenn in 1968 but over in the UK she had a huge following as well because on her album called Touch em With Love she had a track called I'll Never Love Again and that got to number one here in the UK and she had her own show on the BBC and that got shown here and also in Europe and it also got used in Australia so that show went out to lots of different countries so in the early 70s 1971 is when she released her final album called Patchwork and in the 1970s she also had a show in Las Vegas where she organized everything including the costumes so that must have been pretty stressful in 1976 she was involved in the film that was made about this song and in 1978 was her final live performance and 
1981 was her final TV appearance. After that, she decided to retire from music, which is fully understandable considering how much she'd been involved with up to that point. But what a fantastic singer-songwriter and somebody that can make such a story out of one track. You can make a movie about it, but also the way that she delivers this musically with a really clever appreciation of dynamics but also vocally the way that she tells that story but thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep the suggestions coming in the comments below let me know what you guys think and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll see you guys at the next one rock